This is Brad Buell, and I'm joined today by one of Broadleaf's talented engineers, Chris Cottrell. Chris, thank you for putting this together. Of course. Thanks for having me. Let's get on with it. A 2015 Forrester poll of retailers shows a continued increase in merchandise teams and tools. Whether editing product catalog data and associated media, bundling products, or adding an online assortment not available through other channels, the role and importance of the online merchandiser continues to grow in step with overall web sales. When considering the role of the online merchandiser, it's funny to think that so much focus is on the user experience of the consumer. Uh, for sure, getting a customer to the product they're looking for and helping them check out as quickly as possible while trying to upsell them efficiently is extremely important to an online business. But by also focusing on the user experience of the, the daily jobs of an online merchandiser, a business can stand to save countless hours of administrative entry and business process savings with the right system built for merchandisers. With online merchandisers in mind then, we're proud to show you Broadleaf's latest version of our Enterprise Edition. By leveraging an intuitive interface, which you'll see to today, the process of catalog management is easy and can even be enjoyable. We deliver it through a single tool. So working with design, marketing, and management teams is all done through the same interface. And Broadleaf's individual and group level security settings, along with sandbox environments, allow organizations to manage, approve, and deploy changes to production on preset schedules without having to use more technical resources. So I'll turn it over now to Chris, who will take us through a few use cases and dig in. I'll be taking on the identity of a merchandiser to show the management of categories, products, and product bundles through the Broadleaf admin interface. Before we get started, let's take a minute to review some basic Broadleaf terminology to make sure we're all on the same page. In Broadleaf, the key entities are products and SKUs. In the most basic case, a product has a single associated SKU. For example, a company may carry a particular hot sauce and have a stock of 100 bottles. In this case, the hot sauce product has a single SKU of quantity 100. In more complex cases, a product may have several SKUs. For example, you may have a set of t-shirts which vary in size and color. To capture these differences, Broadleaf uses product options. From this diagram, we can see how the t-shirt product utilizes the size and color product options to create the full scope of SKU variation. Each of these SKUs would then be available for purchase. For instances, when you want to sell several products together, Broadleaf has product bundles. A product bundle is simply a grouping of SKUs that are intended to be sold as a single entity. For example, your company may carry several hot sauces that should be sold together as a variety pack. On the other hand, you may want to sell a five pack of one particular hot sauce at a discounted price for all the bulk buyers out there. Broadleaf uses categories to group sets of products and product bundles. To go along with our previous example, the hot sauce product will be placed under the hot sauce category, and the t-shirt product might be placed under the merchandise category. Now, on the other hand, if we wanted a more specific category hierarchy, the t-shirt product could be placed under its own subcategory under merchandise, apparel, men. Now, unfortunately, grouping products using categories can sometimes be a bit too rigid to solve every business case. For instance, what if we wanted to create an offer targeting hot sauces produced by a particular manufacturer? Since the targeted hot sauces could be located in a multitude of categories, we need a more precise and powerful way of grouping products. To meet this need, we introduce something called product groups. Product groups are dynamic, reusable, and non-customer-facing meta-categories that are intended to be used for offers, price modifiers, and content targeting. Now that we have that out of the way, Let's imagine that we're merchandisers at the Heat Clinic Hot Sauce Company. So there's me, and there's you. Heat Clinic is a growing e-commerce that is beginning to expand its line of t-shirts in hopes of achieving some additional exposure and some organic marketing through its customers. Today, we're going to introduce the first mascot t-shirt. And to help this t-shirt gain some traction, we also want to configure a cross-sell path from Green Ghost, which is one of our top-selling hot sauces, to these new t-shirts. And while we're at it, why don't we also configure an upsell path from Green Ghost to a Green Ghost and Mascot T-shirt bundle. But let's not stop there. Let's kick it up another notch. 
We also want to ensure that our customers get an offer for 10% off of these t-shirts in the first week that they're available. All right, to help guide us through this process, I've come up with a set of tasks that we'll need to complete through the Broadleaf admin. Our first task will be to introduce the mascot t-shirt. We'll then be able to use this product and its various SKUs to create a product bundle, and this will allow us to cross and upsell. We'll start by creating a new category so that our mascot t-shirt and any similar designs have a place to live in our category hierarchy. We'll then create the mascot t-shirt product and use product options to generate a set of SKUs and we'll also apply an existing offer for 10% off of this t-shirt. Next up, we'll explore a pre-configured t-shirt product group and see how it's used in combination with our offer. Then, with the intention of upselling our Green Ghost Hot Sauce, we'll create a Green Ghost and Mascot t-shirt bundle. After that, we'll be able to update the Green Ghost Hot Sauce so that we can cross and upsell. And once we're finished with all of that, we'll submit our work for approval. And since we'll be using Broadleaf's workflow, none of our changes will appear live on the customer-facing site until they've been approved and deployed. All right, I think it's time to get started with the first item on our list, creating a new category. So we'll navigate over to the Broadleaf admin, we'll log in, and go over to the category section. Now the first thing that we need to do when introducing a new category is figure out where it should be placed. We have a couple of ways of getting our bearings within the category hierarchy, but we'll start by navigating the hierarchy and then come back to see how we could have done it differently. So since we're trying to introduce a category that would be a subcategory to t-shirts, let's dive into the merchandise category and then apparel, men's, and there's our men's t-shirt category. Now you may have noticed that as we were navigating through this hierarchy, that these breadcrumbs began to appear along the top. You may have also noticed that they represent the names of the categories that we've selected so far. These breadcrumbs help us to understand our current context in the hierarchy and actually allow us to jump back to a previously selected context. Now that we know that the men's t-shirt category exists, let's use the merchandise breadcrumb to jump back to the root of the hierarchy. And from there, I'll show you how we can quickly find the t-shirt category in the future using our search bar. So according to the search bar, we have the ability to search for categories by name or URL. Don't know the URL, and I don't remember the full name of the category. Let's just search using shirts. And we'll see what we get. All right, so it turns out that the full name was T-shirt, and I ended up getting a partial match for the name. But it also turned out that there's actually several T-shirt categories. So let's check the column labeled full category path to look for the men's one. There we go, there's the one but I'd really like to see what it looks like in the context of the hierarchy. So if you look at the row level actions over here on the right, we actually have a jump to context action. So let's click it. Awesome, so we're once again in the context of the men's t-shirt category, and we got here much quicker this time. Even better, this interface will be a great way to visualize and organize our categories as our catalog continues to expand. And using the search functionality, we'll be able to find deep line categories very quickly. So, like I mentioned previously, as part of introducing our first mascot t-shirt, we want to create a mascot t-shirt category since we're expecting to launch several other similar designs in the future. At this point, we definitely know this is the context where our mascot category should be placed. So, using another row level action, we'll add a category. We'll give it a name of mascot and come down to check the URL. Now you may have noticed that as I typed in the name, an SEO friendly URL was being generated. You may have also noticed that since we used the row level action, it knows that the parent category is the men's t-shirt category. Now with everything in place, let's create that category. All right, looks pretty good and you can see that it's nicely situated into our hierarchy. But warning, here comes the shameless Broadleaf plug. In Broadleaf, Categories are rich objects, so that means that there's much more to a category than the basic fields that we've supplied thus far. To see more of what goes into a category, let's look at the edit form of our new mascot category. So from this view, we can see the full category form where we can edit any additional information. As you can see from a quick glance, Broadleaf categories have marketing, media, search, and several other capabilities. 
Also, due to Broadleaf's capacity for customization, everything that you see in this form and other forms in the admin can be manipulated using a few lines of code. So if your team needs to define any additional fields or feels that there's too much clutter, fields can easily be added, removed, or reorganized to fit your needs and streamline your work. For now, I think this is everything this category needs. So we can go back to our checklist and mark the first item off. And now we'll move on to creating our mascot t-shirt product. So once again, head back over to the admin, go to the product section, and hit add product. So we'll provide a name of Heat Clinic mascot. We'll give a description, 100% cotton crew neck, and we'll throw on get yours today. And then we'll select our parent category. As you can tell, this is our category hierarchy interface once again. This time, I'll just search for mascot, find our category, and there it is. I'll select that. And then let's check the URL. So this is another place you may have noticed where the name is used to generate an SEO-friendly URL. Now, one unique thing about this generated URL is that it actually prepends the URL of the parent category as well. We'll use this information a bit later, so try to keep it in mind, but for now, we'll move on. So next, we'll head over to the pricing tab and set the MSRP to $19.99, and then back to our general tab to provide a primary image. So this is Broadleaf's folder interface for organizing images and other assets. Let's see if the assets for the men's mascot t-shirt have already been uploaded to the admin by our creative team. Now, much like the category hierarchy that we saw previously, we have a couple of ways to track down these images. So first, we'll start by exploring the catalog folder. Then we'll go into merchandise, apparel, and there we go, there's t-shirts, and there's the shirts that we're looking for. Now you may have noticed that as we dove deeper into the folder structure, that we're given breadcrumbs along the title bar, very similar to the category hierarchy structure. Alternatively, if our creative team had directly given us the images, we could simply use the Upload New Asset tab to upload the asset and then provide a folder path so that it's correctly organized. But since we already know that the images are uploaded, we'll go back to the Choose Existing Asset tab to select our primary image. Now one last thing before we select our image I want to point out is that this media lookup also includes search functionality. So now that we know that the mascot images are in place, we could have simply searched for the word mascot to find our images. But I already have them right here, so I'll go ahead and select the black version as our primary image. And with the basic product information in place, let's see how this product would look on our customer-facing site. So since we're in the Broadleaf admin interface using workflow, we have the capability to preview these changes on the customer-facing site before they go live. So to do so, I'll first save. And then I'll use this preview on site button here at the top of the form. So this is our customer facing site loaded to the new products page, which again is only a preview since our work has not yet been approved or deployed. The key indicator of being in preview mode is this colorful bar at the top of the page. So if it's present, you're definitely in preview mode and you have nothing to worry about. Anyway, everything looks pretty good so far. We can see the name that we provided, the description, the price, primary image and the URL up there looks correct. Now our company has many Spanish speaking international customers, so we also need to make sure that we provide a Spanish description. So to do that, we'll head back over to the admin and we'll use this translation icon just above the description. So I'll add a Spanish description. There we go, I'll save. Close that. Now I'll save and preview on site to see how it looks. Now to check the translation, we'll have to switch over to one of our Spanish language versions. So I'll click the little Mexico flag here. And you can see our translation made it. And also, you may have noticed that the price looks different. So if you remember, we set the MSRP to 1999, but what actually happened here is it's been converted to pesos. 
Now, Broadleaf has the capability to precisely control conversion rates and product-specific pricing per locale. So if that's not the exact price that you want for the conversion, it can be edited a little bit. Anyway, the product looks great so far, but we're clearly missing something. I mean, this is a t-shirt product, and there aren't any size or color options to select. We definitely need to create additional SKUs to cover each of the shirt variations. So to do that, we'll head back over to the admin, and we'll go to the Options tab of the product page. From here, we can add product options to help us define all the SKU variations that we need. For this t-shirt product, we'll need size and color options. Now, I've taken the liberty of predefining some product options before we started, but I'd like to show you what goes into each of these options. So we'll be back to this page in just a second, but for now, we'll head over to the product options section, and we'll take a look at the shirt size option. So there's just a couple things I wanna point out here. First, we've defined each of the option values. So the shirt size allows small, medium, large, and extra large. And second, I set the use and SKU generation field to yes, so that when we generate SKUs using this product option, all possible variations of the option will be created. All right, so let's head back over to the product page to consume these. Scroll down, there's our product, and over to the options tab. So I'll first add the shirt size, and then the shirt color, and I'll hit the generate SKUs button. There we go. And the SKUs collection above, we created all the possible SKU permutations according to the product options that we've provided. Before we preview these updates on the customer-facing site, we need to add some additional images to go with the red and silver versions of the shirt. So to do that, we'll head over to the Media tab, and this is where we define all of our secondary media for this product. If you remember, we already added the black version of the mascot t-shirt as our primary image. So this time, we'll need to add the silver and red versions to cover all of our color variations. So I'll hit Add, and this time I'll search using mascot. There we go, I'll add the red one first. And then I'll head back in, search for mascot once again, and add our silver version. All right, and let's preview that on site. All right, so it looks great so far. We have all of our options and our associated images in place. Now, if you remember, the second part of this checklist item actually said to apply an existing offer. For the sake of time, I've taken the liberty of pre-configuring a product group and its associated offer. But don't fret, I'll show you exactly how I set them up. For now, we'll head to our checklist and check this item off. And then to explore our product group, we'll head back over to the admin and over to the product group section. We'll look at the t-shirts product group. And as you can see, this is a rule-based product group. Alternatively, we could have used a product set group where we would specify the exact list of targeted products. This would give us very precise control over the products that are placed into the group. Now, on the other hand, rule-based groups are generally more flexible and grow naturally as more and more products meet the rule-based requirements. Now, if you remember, the generated URL for our product looks something like the following. The key aspect is that it starts with the parent category URL, which in this case is mascot. So in our product group, I use this information to target the mascot category and a few others that you see here. All right, with that in place, let's go over to our offer and see how this product group is used. Now there's a few things I wanna point out for this offer. First, that the type is percent off items we said 10% off, and this offer becomes valid on March 15th, which is the release date for our t-shirt line, and ends a week later on the 22nd, which is when we want it to end. And the last thing that I want to point out is the rule builder specifies that the t-shirt product group that we were just looking at will receive this discount. And that's all that we need to apply an offer to each of the products in our product group. 
Warning, here comes the second shameless Broadleaf plug. If you want to find out more about Broadleaf offers, check out our Offers and Promotions webinar, which is available at Broadleaf's YouTube channel. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to work. We can check this item off our list and move on to creating a Green Ghost and Mascot T-shirt product bundle. So back in the Admin section, we'll go to the Products section and add a product bundle using that secondary action. Now, as a reminder, a product bundle is simply a grouping of SKUs that are intended to be sold together. To create every possible combination of SKUs between Green Ghost and Mascot T-shirts, we would need to create several bundles. But for now, I'll just create the bundle, including Green Ghost and the medium red Mascot T-shirt. So, we'll provide a name, Green Ghost and Mascot T-shirt bundle. And I'll specify that it's the medium red version. And we'll come down and we'll set parent category, product bundles, and we'll select the primary image. This time we'll go into catalog, bundles, and there's the image we're looking for. Then we'll come down to our SKU bundle items where we'll define each of the SKUs that goes into this bundle. So first, I'll go grab our green ghost hot sauce and say a quantity of one for this bundle. And then next, I'll add our medium red version of our new t-shirt. There it is. And once again, say quantity of one. Now, the last thing that we need to do is head over to the pricing tab and make sure that our pricing model is configured correctly. So for this bundle, we want the price to reflect the sum of each of the SKUs in the bundle. And we already have item sum selected, so we're good to go. So I'll hit save, and we'll preview it on site, see what it looks like. All right, looks pretty good. And I think we can check another item off of our list. So we'll do that and move on to one of our last things on our list. So the next thing is setting up cross and upsell patterns for our new t-shirts. And as a reminder, we're going to cross sell from Green Ghost to our new mascot t-shirt. And we're going to upsell from Green Ghost to our product bundle. So once again, to pull this off, we'll go back to the product section of the admin. And we'll take a look at the Green Ghost hot sauce product and go over to the marketing tab where we can configure our cross and upsell products. Add our new t-shirt as the cross sell product. There it is. And then I'll add our bundle product as the upsell product. There you go. I'll save and let's see what it looks like on the site. So for now, our customer facing site is only configured to show cross sell products in this banner on the right. So it looks like our changes are being displayed correctly. So with that, we can mark another item off our list. And I think all we have left is to submit our work. So to do that, we'll head over to the My Changes section of the admin. There we go. And since a lot of our changes have interdependencies, we need to promote all of our changes together. But we should provide a thorough promotion message so that our supervisor understands all of our changes. So I'll select them all and hit Promote and give it a title of Introduced Mascot, mascot T-Shirt. And let's think, what have we done? So first, we introduced the men's mascot T-Shirt category. And along the way, we became more familiar with traversing Broadleaf's category hierarchy interface and got to see some of what goes into building one of these categories. After that, we introduced the mascot t-shirt product. Mascot t-shirt product. And used the shirt size and shirt color product options to generate SKUs. 
In doing so, we also took a dive into Broadleaf's asset folder, SKU generation and management, and saw some of Broadleaf's basic internationalization capabilities. We also explored a product group and how it can be used in combination with an offer. After that, we created a green ghost and mascot t-shirt bundle using SKUs from each of the products. And then, using the bundle and the mascot t-shirt itself, we configured cross and up sale patterns. And I think that sums everything up. So let's promote our changes for approval. And now with our work submitted, our supervisor will either approve or reject the changes. If approved, they will also add the changes to the March 15th deployment so that everything related to our new t-shirt line will go live on the customer facing site at the same time. And with that, I think we can mark the last item off of our list and we're done. So I'll hand it back over to Brad to wrap us up. All right, thanks for taking us through all that, Chris. We hope the benefits of using broadly for online merchandising have been clear. Whether as a merchandiser using our intuitive what you see is what you get editor, which automates best practices in an interactive way, or working within a single tool to manage an online store across all team members, ultimately to managing online changes through an intuitive change, approve, and deploy process that's all done in the same interface. Through all this, we've focused Broadleaf's user experience efforts on the team using the backend admin and creating an engaging solution which combines intuitive features with deep customization capabilities.